Hello, and thank you for joining the Word of Faith Love Center channel. I'm Dr. Reginald Garman, and we're just so delighted to have you join us today. I pray that this message that you will hear, it will inspire your soul, it will renew your mind, and it will just bring such joy in your spirit and challenge you to be everything that God has called you to be. Our mission here at Word of Faith Love Center is to love God with our living and to live God through our loving. Share this channel with your family and friends, and we hope to see you real soon at a live service right here at Word of Faith Love Center. God bless you. It's a beautiful Lord to witness everybody's worship, especially from our youth this morning. So good morning. Are we enjoying service so far? It's a blessing, it's been a blessing. So Chelsea Berry, a native of Atlanta. She is the daughter of proud parents, Reverend Randy and uh, Miss Regina Berry. Chelsea has her bachelor's of science in exercise science and kinesiology with a minor in psychology. And Chelsea has just completed her first year of graduate school where she is pursuing a master's in kinesiology with a concentration in sports, performance, and strength and conditioning. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> Chelsea's favorite scripture is Proverbs 12, verse 9, and it states, It's better to be a nobody and yet have a servant than pretend to be somebody and have no food. I am ecstatic to introduce to you this dear sister of mine, Ms. Chelsea Berry, who will be delivering the word for us this morning. Y'all give a round of applause to her. They're optimistic on life and they're wanting to influence others, but they're young. And a lot of times we feel like as young people, we don't have a voice. And, and, I, and I tell myself all the time, you know, God tells me that you can speak, you have, you have the gift. But when you're always trying to hide and you're always trying to run away, it's going to keep coming. It's gonna keep coming. I, I had a word plan, but I, I don't even know if I wanna talk about it anymore because. <laughs> Sometimes. I 
give myself to you. Ooh, my life is now my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Come on. Mm -mm. My life is now my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. My life is now my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is now my own. Well, you guys can go ahead and be seated. Yes. All right, you guys can go ahead and also bow your head, and we're going to get a word of prayer in before we get started, okay? Thank you, God, for bringing us here today, allowing us to be in your presence. I pray that all these gifts and these talents that you have bestowed again bestowed upon all of us will be utilized and have been utilized and will bless someone out here today. I pray that as we end off with the word that someone will be blessed and someone will take this home and apply it to their own personal lives. And just give me the strength to pursue your word, fulfill your promises to the people out here in the congregation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, it's funny, I was asking my dad last night, I said, Dad, what happens when you actually have something planned, but it doesn't ever go as planned? You know, I came up here thinking, I was like, you know, I'm going to come up here, do my normal message, I had everything planned out, and then I'll bust out in tears, you know? <laughs> but that's okay. That is okay. That is okay. So, we're going to go ahead and start off. We'll start off with Matthew 7, 14. It's a scripture. When you get there, just, you know, give a little hand wave. Amen. And before I really get started, I just want to thank you guys for allowing me to speak today. I want to thank Pastor Garmin, First Lady, Dad, and all of our lovely youth. Oh, where'd they go? Oh. <laughs> Over there. <laughs> um, is everyone there? Yes? All right, cool. So, scripture says, For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. So, when you think about that, I think about the different paths that we're on in life. Where are we going? What are we looking forward to? Where are we right now? Where have we been? What is God's plan for us? The title of the message today is Stay on the Trail. Stay on the Trail. This summer, I've been going on a lot of different runs, just going on walks outside because I just enjoy being outside. And this one particular trail that I went on it had signs literally at every corner and post that says stay on the trail. And at first I was like, okay, if they tell me to stay on the trail one more time, I'm going to veer off the trail because like, 
<laughs> what are you trying to tell me? And the more that I kept seeing the tri the more I kept seeing the signs, it was saying, I felt like God was speaking to me, telling me to stay on the trail. I don't know what trail, but whatever his trail is, he was telling me to stay on it. And when I think about life and I think about all the things that people go through and experience, we oftentimes want to veer off and do our own thing. We oftentimes want to lean on our own strength, but God wants us to lean on his strength so that he can fulfill whatever promises he has for us. And though it may be hard, though it may seem like, oh, you know, it's never going to happen, I'm never going to get to my destination, I feel as though as long as you stay on the trail, God will lead you to whatever direction he wants you to go in. And for those of you that don't know what a trail is, it is a mark or a series of signs or objects that are left behind for someone to follow or be led. So if you think about it, when you're on a trail, when you're following something, there are things in front of you that are guiding you. Think of it as like your Bible, God's word is guiding you to be more like him, to speak more like him, to be kind to others, to love on others, to show who he is. <clears throat> and today I just want to let you guys know just a few things just to help you to stay on the trail. I think I have about 15 minutes because <laughs> I am a little hungry. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing of staying on your trail is to get naked. Do not literally get naked. Literally keep your clothes on, please, for the love of God. <laughs> what that means is learning how to unmask who you are. Getting naked is taking down every mask, every imposter syndrome, every type of thing that is blocking you from who you truly are. God has called each and every one of us to be somebody, something. We all have gifts and talents. But a lot of us mask ourselves. A lot of us try to be people that we are not. And step one of becoming and walking in God's purpose is to get naked. When you get naked, you become vulnerable and you become open to receiving God's word, receiving the things that he has for you. When you are hiding and running, which most of us do, it's hard to hear God. It's hard to hear God. I know from personal experience, I am the type of person to try to avoid. I tried to avoid doing this. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but every time someone just kept asking, Chelsea, you're going to... Yes, because the more you run, it's going to keep coming after you, and you just have to face it. God doesn't give you things, or God doesn't allow you to do things that he doesn't think that you're equipped to do. And whether you might be 55, 22, or 12, God will give you the tools that you need to do anything that, you, that he puts you that you can put your mind to. Secondly, learn to isolate yourself from the world, rid yourself of distractions. So right now I've been in a period of isolation. Like I feel as though I may have lost like most of my friends or just feeling like I'm just alone. But God doesn't leave you. People may leave you, but God won't leave you. And a lot of the times we don't understand why we're being put in isolation or why we're having to be separated from everyone because we think, oh, well, they don't like me or they hate me or whatever the case might be. But deep down, God is trying to build your spirit up so that way you can be an influence to others. You can show God's love, God's compassion, God's kindness, God's peace forbearance, the fruits of the spirit that we must bestow when we give our lives to Christ. Yes. 
A lot of the times people think that when you isolate yourself, you have to be completely alone. Don't be completely alone. God is still there. But also make sure you're surrounding yourself with people that also believe what you believe in. The Bible does say that bad company corrupts good character. And when you have bad company around you, it will deter you from God. It will you pull, you, pull you away from God. And on that specific trail that you might be on, you could easily veer off. And once you start veering off the trail, you have to ask yourself, how far can I actually go before I have to start asking God to reel me back in? Because once you get too far off, then what? You get into a deep, dark pit, and you're sitting there trying to figure out how in the world did I get here? I went on a three-day detox fast before coming up here because I wanted to make sure that my heart was in the right place before speaking. Um, I've been going through some really tough situations, and I felt a lot of that was weighing on me. And I didn't want to get before people and have that on my heart or my mind. Because a lot of times, people will come before you, people try to speak life to you, and they have a lot of things that they don't deal with. And I think the biggest part of being an influence somebody else, you have to deal with yourself first. God, God is going to deal with you. God is going to deal with your heart. But you have to also be able to acknowledge when you are wrong, you have to have conviction in your own heart to say, you know what, God, I am not right right now, and I need to be fixed. I need to be purged. Whatever is not of, of you, whatever is not in your will and your promise, please take it out of me. And by all means, that detox definitely took everything out. <laughs> you know, some things I was like, uh... I don't remember that being there, but hey, okay. <laughs> but but yes, definitely making sure that you cleanse yourself. Once you cleanse yourself, you are able to come before others. And it doesn't even have to be a large crowd. You can even be come before one of your friends, close family member, just making sure that you are right with God before you go before a man. Fighting that good company. Um, when you're around certain people, your energy can be swayed. I realized that after doing that fast, my spirit was open to anything. And the Bible says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And my flesh was very weak. And as easy as it is to, you know, not eat food or not get on social media or to stay away from certain things, sometimes people's spirits can latch on to you, especially when you are in a vulnerable state. It's, it's quite sad that in this world that, that we live in, how easy it is to transfer energies, to transfer spirit, and you don't even realize it. That's why they say, be mindful of the people that you're around. Walk with wise people, because once you start walking with fools, everything that follows is gonna be destroyed. Everything that follows. Some days, oof. I needed to cry this morning. Sometimes it's okay to release, and a lot of people feel like it's not. I'm veering off a little bit, but release is good. When you release, you're, you're healing, you're open to more, and God can speak to you more. Oftentimes I feel like we are, we are all just so like in our own worlds, in our own space, and we can't hear God. 
there's a song that I listen to sometimes it's called Be Still and Know. And a lot of times we're always on the go. We're always moving so fast that we can never really truly hear God. And when you finally sit down and say, okay, God, I need to sit down with you and isolate myself and really figure out what it is that you want me to do, then the plan's already written out and you just have to stay on it. Right, stay on the trail, Dad. <laughs> my dad wants to do my speech for me so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay though. <laughs> Moving along. Another thing, learning how to seek balance. Once you get on a trail and <laughs> once you get on a trail and you are living for God and you are finding your way with God, praying and meditating and really understanding who he truly is and how he can be a be blessing in your life and an influence to others once you have found that true connection with him, you have to seek balance. Once you start truly investing your life into God, investing into that relationship, there are going to be things that are going to come attack you, literally. This morning I woke up, my throat was hurting, and I was like, oh God. <laughs> Mic didn't fit on my ear, ears too small. And I'm like, those are little things that are trying to block me from being able to say what I need to say to the people. And a lot of times we don't realize that the devil can attack us in, in many ways. Easy to disguise and the people that you're around, your job, the things that you consume your life with, the music that you listen to. Everything plays a part. And you don't even realize it. Every little, deep, every little thing plays a part. But when you seek balance, when you learn how to balance your real life and God's life and God's world, you're able to live a you live, you're able to live at a steady pace. You're able to stay on that trail and actually flow and just take your time and go at the pace. I um, I made a friend this summer who taught me how to balance my life. You know, I didn't know I needed that, but he truly did. I am a person who is strictly by the book. I will stay on a path that's, I'm so focused, so deep in that nothing else in the world matters to me, literally. But he asked me, he said, do you do anything else outside of work? And I said, um, well, I read my Bible, I might go on a run or, you know, do some things of that nature. He's like, no, like do things that you actually enjoy doing. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm like, I enjoy my job, so is that not enough? <laughs> but the point of that was, he was trying to say that it's okay to have balance. God teaches us to have balance. God teaches us not to put so much focus into our work, so much into turmoil, so much into the things that are not going to fulfill us wholly. Your job is not gonna fulfill you. People cannot fulfill you. Things cannot fulfill you. Success cannot fulfill you. All those things fade. Looks fade too. Amen. Do remember that, friends. <laughs> Do remember that. So enjoy your years of youth. <laughs> no shade. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> but part of that balance comes from understanding that there is a time and a place for everything. The Bible talks about there is a time for everything and there's a season for everything that is under the sun. So when you, when you look at that, you understand that a lot of the things that we invest our time in might be meaningless for now. That doesn't mean that they don't matter, but understand that there is a healthy balance in whatever you are giving your time to. God wants us to be equal in all parts of our life, serving him and serving others. And finally, my last note, because we are uh, slowly running out of time. 
is to be present. Be present on your trail. A lot of the times we're always looking for the next thing, the next destination, the next opportunity, the next location, the next thing, but you don't take the time to be present in the now. Learning how to take whatever God is giving you and take, and take it in now. A lot of the times we don't even realize that we can't ever move up in life or go anywhere because God wants you to be present where you are. You can't get the new Mercedes if you don't take care of your Nissan. You can't get the new Jays if you can't take care of your Skechers. <laughs> and even if you do get the new thing, it's going to be only so long before it just up. You can't get a new boyfriend if you, take, if you can't even take care of the one you have. I don't have a boyfriend, so don't, don't take that like that. <laughs> No, but I'm not available, so don't even think that either. <laughs> but anyhow, yes. So learning how to just be present. God gives us whatever we need in order to take and be present where we are. Learn how to take it in. God wants us to process whatever we are in. There is no good thing that comes easy, that comes quick. When you're on your trail, learn how to be in the trail, stay in the trail, and just embrace it. Embrace the challenges, embrace the setbacks, embrace everything. There was this devotion that I read once, and it, it said, do you want to be a squatter or do you want to be a bouncer? When you're facing things in that present moment, are you going to allow yourself to fall flat on your face and just be dead, or are you going to are you gonna take whatever, you're, whatever is happening to you and keep moving? Squatter, fall flat on your face, the world's over. Bouncer, take whatever's happening and just embrace it. Part of being present is allowing God to utilize you in any way possible. One scripture that I, that I look to when I think about being present is Galatians 6, 9. Don't become weary while doing good for in due time you will reap what you have sown. So for those of you that might be on a trail where it seems dark and it may not seem like anything's going your way or there is no final destination, your time is coming. Your time is coming. You have to be patient. And a lot of people don't know what, what it means to be patient, but you know, you'll learn one day. <laughs> you will learn one day. The kids of the these kids today, they will learn one day. <laughs> hey, Millie. <laughs> they will definitely learn one day. And final remarks. Um, it's an acronym that I actually like to go off of just on how I live my daily life. It's termed growth. And the G, you can actually write this down if you'd like to. I'd actually prefer if you write it down. <laughs> Um, the G stands for give it your best. The R, rid yourself of distractions. The O is one day at a time, so taking everything one day at a time. W, walk with God. Oh, slow down, I'm sorry. I'll repeat it. <laughs> um, w is walk with God. T, track your progress. H, have faith. And whatever you do, have faith. It can be as little as a mustard seed or it can be as big as a watermelon, but have faith. I'm going to repeat it one more time for the people in the back. <laughs> G, give it your best. R, rid yourself of the distractions. O, one day at a time. W, walk with God. T, Track your progress, and H, have faith. Oh, okay. Okay, we're going to go ahead and bow our heads and close out. 
Thank you, Pastor Garvey. <laughs> Come on, y'all can do better than that. Amen. Yes. Amen, amen. Y'all take your seats just for a moment. Let me tell you a little story about Chelsea. And then I want Chelsea to pray for our young people today. Because our young people are on a trail. They're lost. They feel empty. They also feel alone, Chelsea. They feel isolated. They feel a sense of darkness. But you're a living witness of having faith in God. When Chelsea was a little girl, Chelsea used to hide behind her mother legs because she was yay tall. You remember, Regina? And pastor, you know, pastor speaks to everybody. So I would go to Chelsea, and she would be hiding behind her mother. I'm like, come give pastor a hug. <laughs> she doesn't run from me no more. <laughs> but Chelsea, I was sitting there thinking, I've been trying to pull you out of the shadow for a long time. And today as I sat there, I said, Lord, here she is. Since she was a little girl, I was trying to pull her out of the shadow because I knew it was something special. She has one of the purest hearts I've ever seen. And she wants to please her heavenly father and her parents. She came to me early this summer. She said, Pastor, she said, can you help me be a better public speaker? I'm telling it all in her. And we talked, I said, Chelsea, I think it would be great if you give like two minute speeches or sermonettes on Sunday. Just, just for your generation. Then I didn't hear nothing else from her. <laughs> I didn't forget. I didn't forget. But today you got, you got 20 minutes. She got 20 minutes today. <laughs> she went from two minutes to 20 minutes. Look at God. Look at God. There may be some young people here today that you're on the trail. And I actually want to invite all the young people to the altar right now. We want to pray for you before you leave today. If all the young people just come down here to the altar, you got to have faith in God. 
Ushers, y'all can move the podium. Chelsea's going to pray for y'all today. Y'all come on down to the altar. Come on. Y'all can clap as they come. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Y'all can clap louder than that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Y'all look at these young people. Come on now. Come on. Y'all got to encourage them now. Y'all got to encourage them. Y'all got to encourage them. You don't like it when you see them on the news, but they in church today. They in church today. Come on, open up your mouths and clap your hands and let's encourage these. Come on, come on, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't have to be alone. You don't have to feel like you're lost because God is your shepherd. He's going to lead you and guide you. He's going to show you the way. And I was sitting there and a scripture came to my mind. In James, it says, pure and undefiled religion. Is taking care of the widows and the orphans. And Chelsea, I was sitting there and it's like the Holy Spirit was telling me we have a lot of children that are orphans. They have a house, but they don't have a home. They have a house, but they don't have a covering. they still feel like they're not a part. That they don't belong. That they don't have a voice. They feel like orphans, even in their own house. But young people, I want you to know today that you're part of the family of God. And you always have a home. And you always have a voice. Chelsea, I just want, whatever you want to say to these young people today, whatever you want to speak into their life, whatever you want to encourage them, I want you to say whatever is on your heart, and then I want you to pray for them. Because I think you know where they are. You know what they deal with. And you know the struggles they face. beautiful people how are you guys feeling today good full yes that's what we want um i'm just gonna go ahead and pray for you guys um is there anyone that's here that's feeling you know a little empty no You just raise your hand. We can all bow our heads and close our eyes just so everyone feels a little bit more comfortable. Yes. Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Thank you, God, just for having us here today. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be in your presence. Anyone out here that is feeling empty or lonely or like it's too late to still submit to you, let them know that it's okay. Let them know that, it is, that you are here to protect and guide us and give us peace and guidance and balance. Let these young people know that no matter what you do, no matter what mistakes you make, no matter what impurities you have, discrepancies, anything that you may think is not of God or that you think that God won't accept, he will accept. I pray that you open these young people's hearts, open my heart, open everyone in this sanctuary's heart up to you, God. I pray that you allow your spirit to be filled in each and every one of us, allow each and every one of us to be an influence to somebody else. As we go back to school, as we go back to work, as we go back to our regular lives, I pray that you allow each person to have some piece of you to give to somebody else. I pray that you give us impact, influence, a voice to be heard, 
advocacy. I pray that you just allow us to be filled with your spirit. Allow us to use our voices to speak the words that you have put in the Bible for us. I pray that whatever gifts each and every one of these individuals has, you allow them to use it to the best of their ability. Whatever you do, work at your best. Don't work to prove yourself to man, work to prove yourself to God. You'll never fulfill a man's heart, never fulfill a man's desires, only God's desires. Continue to chase after God's heart, God's word, God's promises. God's spirit. Allow yourself to come out of that show. Be okay with being uncomfortable in that season. Be okay with being able to allow God to see you at your deepest, darkest pit. Allow God to lift you up out of the trenches. Even when you feel like there's no hope for you. A lot of you today may feel like you don't have hope, you may not have a future, you may not have a plan, but God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives. And no matter what it might be or where, where you may be going, God is always gonna be with you. He's never gonna leave you, never gonna forsake you. As we are beginning to go back into the school year, give us peace, God. Give us peace that will keep us balanced. Give us guidance that will keep us balanced. Give us hope so that we will stay optimistic. Give us the strength to endure whatever we might face on our trails. Allow us to embrace whatever trails we are on with strength, with grace, with joy. Let no man steal your joy. Let no man steal your joy. Let no man steal your peace. Let no man steal your sanity. Mm. Thank you, God. Mm. Sometimes you don't even have anything to say. You can just say thank you. Sometimes when there are no words left to say, just say thank you. out this in this prayer repeat this after me heavenly father we thank you for sending your son jesus christ to suffer on the cross and die defeat the enemy satan on the third day arose from the dead and now he sits at the right hand of the father praying for me that i might have life and have it more abundantly this day and forevermore I dedicate my life I rededicate my life and I give my life to Jesus Christ and as in Jesus name we pray amen 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 come on somebody praise the Lord here today praise God praise God now, as you leave the place today, we got a lot of things outside. We're going to go outside and just celebrate what the Lord has done today. And I want us all to remember that pure and undefiled religion 
is taking care of these young people that are lost, that need guidance, that need love, that needs direction. If you say that you're saved and you're sanctified, find some of these orphans and usher them back into the kingdom of God. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I want to thank Reverend Barry and the entire youth team. Can we just thank Reverend Barry? Reverend Barry, come here. Come on. Hallelujah. Can we thank Reverend Barry and his entire youth team? What an awesome service today. Awesome, awesome. God bless you.